So today, I'm going to talk about lines. Now, there's lines here, this screen, and that's where the picture goes. Great. And there's a line here, this edge of the stage. That's useful, too. That keeps you there, listening to me here. Well, I hope. The world, basically, is full of lines. We need them, right? Um, need to know what country you're from, or where one land begins and where another ends. Now, there's lines of gender, nation, and religion. But these lines that protect and define us also imprison us. Now, language is a line. And when you don't speak someone's language, I mean, not only do you not understand them, but you can't really relate to them. And even when you do understand their language, you might not always hear what they're trying to tell you, and they might not understand exactly what you're trying to say. And I deal with this a lot because I live in multiple cultures. And I'm also freaking bipolar, OK? So my lines are everywhere, or nowhere, or I have no idea where they are. Like right now, actually. It's because of the chemicals in my brain of going up and down. And within that, I need to find a place of the in-between, a place of stability, where I can look at both the highs and the low and understand where to go. So the thing about lines is, if you zoom in on the line itself, there is a space. And that space is where I have found myself existing. Now, it's a space where two worlds exist, one culturally and one chemically. And within this line, I myself become able to create something from both the inside and the outside. So all of this new work that I'm doing actually comes from a story. Basically, in a state of mania in 2012, I decided I wanted to become a scientist. So I said, OK, I'm going to go to Doha, and I'm going to become a scientist. I'm going to study at UCL Qatar. I'm going to study object conservation. Now, Qatar is crazy expensive. Um, it, like, all my money was spent on eating, and basically a beer there costs like $15. So I couldn't create the work that I used to create. And I spent all my time studying. And as an artist, it was very, very difficult. Because I was studying something that I wanted to become. I wanted to research, and I wanted to learn all these new things. Um, but I couldn't create. All right, now I have no money. What do I do? This is what I used to do, actually. I used to make these large ceramic trees um, made out of porcelain, out of soy sauce and vinegar pots. I used to make these huge ice installations of life-size sculptures that I made in the middle of August in Beijing. After that, I had pneumonia. Uh, and I used to make these underwater sculptures, these bicycle installations that via electricity and mineral accretion, I would turn them into living coral reefs. Or pottery. I used to make these plates that were based off of book covers I found in Qatar, or these uh, jars that I made in Jingdezhen uh, based off of Chinese deconstructed comic books. In 2012, I had a show at the Smithsonian in, in Washington, DC, the museum. And so fast forward a year later, I'm in Qatar now. And I hadn't written any thank you notes. And my mother always taught me that I should write them. And if I didn't, I should feel incredibly guilty. And I did. So I had to do what it, and make something from what I had around me. So all I had were the objects in my room, a camera, and a bootleg version of Photoshop. And this is what I, what I made. So very ghetto. It was uh, something I sent out to everyone. It's amateur and everything, but it had thank you on repeat in GIF form. It wasn't perfect, but people loved it, and it got my point across. So I started making more um, Father's Day gifts and um, happy birthday cards and uh, things about one night stands that I hoped would turn into two. But this one, I'll be honest, did not. So GIFs at that time period were becoming a form of communication. And this form of communication was this new way to express yourself on multiple ways through some of the media we consumed. And I wanted to take that information and merge it 
with my stop motion. And after I graduated, which is the first piece I made, which is called Ardan Go, a piece by um, an African uh, Afropop uh, rapper in Sierra Leone who's a doctor by day and rapper by night. His name's David Senge, and he's also a TED fellow. And so he gifted me the music, and I digested it. And I made something of my own, and something that I could really, really understand. And I think using these GIFs, in some sense, I took from the world around me, I made it something that was me, but in actual, actuality, it was we. It was taken from the world around us, it was us. GIFs exist without lines. That's the thing about GIFs, okay? And they're silent. There's no words, there's no line being drawn. And within that, you transcend a type of communication. And you, whether it's gender, color, or culture. And it's also taken from these objects around us, or shared common experiences, or uh, taken from the media we consume. I find them a modern form of communication that everyone basically has seen it, has, has shared this familiar fo form of information, so it's no longer the unknown. When you get something, you have something to, it's something that f is familiar, uh, something you can relate to. And that's kind of why I like it, because living in within two different cultures, like I lived in China for many years, I, I lived in Qatar, I had to find some way to commute with, with people. So um, these, when I found them, I had to bring them into my work. And my work before was huge, it was massive. So I've gone from the massive to the miniature. There's a reason why I'm in this part of the world right now, because uh, I left it and I lived in China for about 11 years. But it's also a part of me, it's, it's my second language. I moved there in 2005 and I went to school there. I got my degree in sculpture at the Central Academy of Fine Arts. It took me forever to learn Chinese, okay? It took me forever. But I had about two years, and it was like, the first thing my teacher told me, after two years of studying and him not talking to me, he was like, Which is basically translated to, wow, Joey, your Chinese has gotten so good, but your sculpture still sucks. One of the reasons why I went to Qatar, it was, it was this, it became no longer interesting because sometimes when you stay in a place too long, it loses its beauty. I have a problem with that. And people always ask me, when will I go back to America? Well, I'll go back to America when I think I'll become a tourist in my own land, in my hometown. Because you go around here and you take pictures everywhere and everything and it's amazing, but you don't do that in your home but your home is actually a really beautiful place. And that's what I'm kind of trying to do with objects, to show people that actually the objects around us that I'm animating are right in front of us, and anything is possible. Let's go to where I'm at now. I'm in Kathmandu, and Kathmandu is a little less intense than Delhi. I love Delhi, okay, but I can only take it for like a couple weeks. And um, Kathmandu lets me chill. That's where I made this. GIFs. And that is an object, that is a shared experience, and that is the media we consume. That's from Ardan Go, okay? What I was gonna sh say is that GIFs exist in the in-between, that there are no lines, that within that place, there is no end, there's no beginning. You don't see the end or beginning, you just see the middle, and that, that middle is where you focus. And I, I don't know, I just, I love that. I, I, I get passion in that, I get passion, and that's why I bring it into my work. And that's why I animate, and that's why sometimes I spend all my time on the computer doing this, because it's my passion. Okay, well that's RuPaul on the right, and that's uh, Honey Boo Boo on the left. And basically in this talk, what I was gonna say, in this section, because there's something in between, but before that there's another slide, I was gonna talk about what I'm made, making now. Pretty Child, it's a, uh, a song by this Gujarati artist from Bombay. And um, it's uh, a song that needed to be crowdfunded, okay? And within that, we asked people from all over India, okay, use the platform Wishberry, and asked them um, to donate 51 rupees, and in exchange, you get to be in the film. 
you send in a childhood photo. Okay? So selling cameos to the masses. And I, like, the way I understand things and visualize things is um, through these types of GIFs. So, like, this is what helps me get through it. RuPaul was like in a cameo that I remember from a childhood. And this is Honey Boo Boo, who's a child that media I consumed. And in between there, there's some rupees from the game Zelda. So now let's go to this cat. Shit. What is he doing? He's looking at me. I dealt with what I got, OK? And I wasn't afraid of that, OK? I wasn't afraid of what people sent me, because honestly, they did not send me childhood photos. They sent me cat photos. But the thing that I was most afraid of was that I, I had to lose control of my creativity. I couldn't do this alone. As an artist, you know, I, you want to do everything yourself, OK? And I had to now ask for help. And these, these pieces of videos take hours and hours and hours, months and months and months and months. And so Norman Mailer once wrote that every one of his books killed him a little bit more. And that's an intense statement. And for me, as an artist and someone with bipolar, I totally relate to it. And in fact, I'm, I like my mania, OK? I fuel it. I drink when I shouldn't drink. I work out and, well, I don't work out, basically. I don't sleep. I work too much. I eat dal makni instead of pl just plain dal. Um, tastes good. But anyway, what happens is that when the piece of work that I have made finishes, I am I'm down. I really, really go down. And I can barely have the courage to show the work that I just killed myself for, which is actually today really important because I like finished this video yesterday. So I think of it as a Darwinian Peter Pan ideology. Now, Peter Pan is innocent. Children are innocent. And you have to have a type of innocence to trust. So therefore, uh, to survive, you kind of need to be like a child. I just want you to know one thing. Let a little part of you be a GIF, OK? No end, no beginning. It's just somewhere in between where you're just you. And within that is actually kind of what fueled this, this work that I'm about to show.